But y'all look at this horse over here and everybody kind of laughs at him and thinks, you know what, this poor horse looks pretty pathetic today. And he does look pretty pathetic. But I want you to keep in mind today about freedom is what I want you to do. And I want you to look at this old horse and you know what, he's not very comfortable. In fact, he's not really enjoying things too much right now. Anybody out there ever look like this horse? I didn't say you look like him. How about feel like him? How's that? Yeah, feel like that. But you know what? I want to share with you a little bit about the good news that I, that we want we have here at Cowboy Church. And we're so glad that you came out tonight. Anybody here for the first time or, or maybe you don't go anywhere else to church? Anybody raise your hand? Oh, yeah, I see your hand. All right, we're glad that you're here tonight. We, we want to just let you know that we are here tonight because we care about each and every one of you. And so... I want to talk to you about freedom. This horse right here is not very comfortable. This is not really intended for him to live a life like this. But I want you to know tonight that many of you here have come to this place and you're just like this horse is. I mean, you've got all kinds of garbage and all kinds of junk and things and cans and the, all kinds of stuff that's plastered all over your life. And although I can't really see it on you, it's on you. Because if you've lived very long, let me tell you something, you're going to end up like this. Because you can't live in the world that we live in today and not become a little bit like this horse is. So he's got all kinds of jugs and he's got tarps and he's got boxes and he's got all kinds of stuff tied all over him. And if the truth was known tonight, many of you that came here tonight, maybe this is exactly how you've been feeling. Well, I want to tell you tonight that God never intended for you to live your life like this. And I bought this horse several few years ago. I picked this horse out as a weanling colt. And I said, you know what, Cheryl, I'm going to use this horse for something. I've got a purpose and plan for this horse's life. And I want you to know here tonight, if you're here and you hear me tonight, I want you to know that God says in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, he says, I have plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and plans to give you a future. So if you're here tonight and you need to have some hope, and you need to know that God's got a plan for you. I'm here to tell you some good news tonight. When I selected this horse, now he could be running out in the green pasture somewhere. And you know what? He'd probably be pretty content. But I'll tell you something. This horse is going to do things that never could have done had it not been that I had a purpose and plan for his life. And I want this horse to make a good ranch horse someday. And he's well on his way. Justin, you've done a great job. But I want to let you know that I've got a purpose for him. And it's not to harm this horse. I don't want to hurt him. I've got a job that I want him to do. But I told my wife when I got this horse, I said, I'm going to use this horse to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. And so tonight, if you come in here and this is how you look and this is how you feel, I'm going to share with you what true freedom is all about. Because you can be living in the United States of America and you can be the most captive person in the world. I spoke in prisons where people are more free behind cinder block walls and barbed walls than they are outside here where we are considered to be free. So if you're here tonight, you say, John, I've got all kinds of stuff in my life, all kinds of junk in my life, and frankly, I've just about had it. And you know, this horse here, he'd really like to get rid of some of this stuff. And you say, John, I'd like to get rid of some of the garbage in my life, but I just don't know how to do it. Well, I want to let you know tonight that God wants to do that for you. God's done something amazing. This stuff right here is symbolic of what every one of us has in our life, and this is symbolic of the sin in our life. And we've all got it because we're all born into sin. Ain't one of us righteous, the Bible says in Romans 3.10. I've got a rope here dragging behind him, and you know what? That's symbolic of your past. Many of you here today maybe have experienced a relationship with Jesus Christ, but you've never cut loose the past, and you've been dragging it around. Well, I want you to know tonight, God doesn't want you to drag your past around. If you have experienced a relationship and He has saved you and He's forgiven you of your sins, the Bible says He remembers them absolutely no more. If you're here tonight and you've never met Jesus Christ, I hope tonight will be the night that you will truly experience freedom for the first time. This horse right here, man, I, I want to do some things with him, but you know, he reminds me so much of my own life. Man, the garbage and the junk that I carried around in my life and still at times I have stuff that's hanging on me. God says, you know what, I want to do something for you. See, I sent my son, Jesus Christ, because I loved you so much, I knew you were going to need a Savior. You're going to need somebody to take this stuff off your life. 
The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's what it says in Romans 5.8. Romans 3.23. Romans 5.8 says this, But while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for you and for me. Isn't that good news? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Man, the payment of our sin is death. There's not much hope there. But God says, I love you all so much, I'm going to do everything for you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you've come in here tonight and you've never experienced a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you've never experienced and accepted the free gift that God has offered you, and I mean absolute, complete freedom tonight, then I'm going to let you know that God wants to do that in your life today. This horse has got stuff on him, and I don't really like to see it on him. And I tell you what, your Heavenly Father, for you Christians out there, He don't want to see you looking like that because He says that I have come to give you abundant life. Are you living the abundant life? The Bible says in John 8, 36, it says, For whoever the Son sets free, he will be free indeed. And my question to you tonight is, I know you live in the land of the free, and we thank God for that tonight. But my question is, are you really free tonight? Have you been set free from the captive? Have you been set free from all the stuff in the past and the junk and the filth and the sin of your life? You've never experienced Jesus Christ. Tonight can be your night. And I believe that God has sent you here for a purpose and for a reason. And I'm going to let this horse teach you and I a great lesson tonight. If you'll pay attention for about five more minutes, I promise you, you're going to be moved to the very core of your being. God wants to cut away the things in our life. The Bible says that Satan has come to kill, steal, and destroy and I'm telling you, you don't have to look very far. Or you can look at your own life and say, John, I tell you what, Satan is a busy man or a busy demon because he's after that. That's what he's doing. Well, I want you to know something. I don't like to see my horse like this. I picked this horse out. I want this horse. I like this horse. I'm proud of this horse. If God wants to do something for you like I want to do for this horse tonight, he came and he forgave your sin by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that when we come to the cross, He's there. We cry out to Him, He's faithful, and He'll forgive us of our sins. We confess our sins, the Bible says, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I'm going to take this horse and I'm going to begin to peel some of this stuff off. For those of you who are Christians today, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders, and let us run the race with perseverance. Keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. For some of you here tonight, you need to get rid of some baggage. You need to cut it loose because the King of kings and Lord of lords, he's paid for it, it's covered, it's forgotten, and it's forgiven. And you need to leave it here tonight. Leave it at this old dirty arena. For those of you that never experienced Jesus Christ, his blood was shed for you and for me. Praise God for that. And you can truly leave here tonight, and you can cry out like this horse will here in a matter of a few minutes. Freedom! You'll have absolute freedom. So I'm going to begin to cut some of these things off this horse. Man, I don't like that stuff on him at all. All the stuff that covers your life, all the filth, all the junk, all the gunk. Satan loves to always remind you of it, bring it all up in your face. Maybe it's your addictions, maybe it's hate, maybe it's anger, maybe it's whatever it is. You just talk about it. God's going to show you what it is in your life, and I believe God's showing you right now. I'm going to begin to peel these things off this horse. I want to get rid of those things. God wants you to just get rid of the things in your life. It don't belong there. I'm going to get rid of this stuff off this old pony. Because I want him to live an abundant life. I want him to live a life that's unrestricted by things that have been placed on him. God wants you to live life that way as well. I'm going to pull some more of this stuff off of him. You know that's got to feel good when that stuff comes off. Let me tell you something. I remember when Jesus Christ first came into my life and He forgave me of my sin. It was like the world was taken off my shoulders. And man, I tell you what, the freedom that I felt when God began to say, you know what? That one's forgiven. That's gone, John. That one's taken care of. And I'd say, oh Lord, but, but, but I remember. He said, I don't care if you remember. I don't remember anymore. That stuff's been forgotten. God wants you to get it out of your life. Where you see, God said that His Son's sacrifice was what it took to pay for sin. And He said, you know what? The Bible says it pleased Him to crush Jesus Christ for you and for me. I'm going to do something here with this horse. And He may not do it just like I want Him to tonight. In fact, He may fight it just a little bit. 
And I'm here to tell you tonight, some of you may be fighting Jesus right now. Some of you have never experienced what true love is all about. And God says that He chooses to love you no matter what you do, no matter what you've done, no matter what you'll do in the future. He loves you as much on your worst days. He loves you on your best day. And this horse may not do what I want him to do just like it here in the next few moments. But God's dealing with your heart right now. I know He is because the Bible says that His word will not return unto Him void. And it will accomplish that which it was set out to do. So if you're sitting there and your heart's beating and you say, Man, I don't know what's going on. I want you to know that God that created all things has just walked up next to you and sat down and said, You know what? I want you and I love you. You may be fighting it just a little bit. I might put this mic down, but I want to show you something amazing. See, we think freedom is when we're running wild and free and living life for ourselves. But I want to tell you something. That's a trap and that's a lie. This horse is going to experience some amazing freedom here in just a few minutes. And it's called surrender. It's called, I want him to know that I'm the Lord of his life. God wants to be the Lord of your life. And when you quit feeling like you've got to be the one calling the shots and making life happen, let me tell you something, there's a great relief in that. So this old horse, you bear with me for just a few moments. But i tell you something, I love this horse, and I have plans for this horse. And God's got plans for you. And God loves you tonight. And I want you to see something here in this horse. And oh, it moves me every single time I see this happen because I realize this is not the nature for this animal. He is to fight and he is to flight and he is to protect himself. The last thing that he's supposed to do is to lay down flat on his side and say, I surrender. Whatever you want to do, this is where I'm at. Well, let me tell you something. It's the most amazing feeling when you surrender to Almighty God and you finally say, that's it, Lord. I've had my life the way I want it. Would you please take the reins of my life and I'm giving them to you now. This old horse right here, we're going to try something. And I pray he lays down, but you may see yourself in this tonight. And I'm telling you something, God's speaking to you. Don't you push him away. Because this horse is going to experience something amazing here. We're going to experience something by watching it. But if you will surrender your heart and soul to Jesus Christ, you will personally experience this tonight in an amazing way. And your life will be changed and transformed forever. So give me just a few seconds. He's fighting it a little bit. That's okay. You may be fighting it too. You see this horse right here? This is a true picture of what it means when you find Christ. This horse right here, let me tell you something. This ain't no... He has surrendered his everything here. He says, I've come. My pride is gone. This is, I'm way fair here. When you come to Jesus Christ, man, you come as you are. You come with all your junk. You come with all your stuff. You don't leave it somewhere else. You bring it to Jesus because that's the way God takes us just like we are. If you're here tonight and God's touching your heart and He's moving you, I can tell you right now, you cry out to Him and say, Oh God, save me. You just leave your pride where it is. And you do what this horse has done. Let me tell you something. He is experiencing unbelievable peace right now. And this can be you. You can be living in the land of the free, and you can be as held captive as anybody in the prison at Angola. But let me tell you something. You can also be living in Angola and experience the most amazing freedom that only comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. If this horse right now could say anything, he would absolutely cry out and say, Freedom! Maybe that's where you are tonight. And I want to encourage you to cry out freedom, and you just say, Jesus Christ, you saved me tonight. You take all the filth and all the rot and all the junk and all the Satan meant for evil and for, for bad, 
You take it and you use it. You cut that stuff out of your life. And you leave it here at the arena at Bar None Cowboy Church. And you don't have to take it anywhere with you. You just leave it right here in this dirt. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father. Lord God, I love you. God, we're not here just to have an event, Lord. We're here, Lord, because you are the event tonight. God, I know there's some men and some women and some young teenage boys and girls and maybe some kids that have come here tonight, Lord. Lord, you've drawn up next to them tonight, God, and they have been held captive and they've been bound and they have been completely ramaged by Satan, Lord. Father, I pray tonight, Lord Jesus, by the power of your blood that you would just draw near to those people, God, and I pray, Lord, they would surrender like this horse did tonight and just lay down at the foot of the cross and allow the healing blood of Jesus Christ to change and transform their life. Father, you will do that because your word tells us you will. You say anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So tonight, Lord, right now, as we pray, Lord, there's those who are giving their life to you, Lord, and I praise you for that right now. For those Christians out there, Lord, who have been riddled by Satan's lies and carrying around all kinds of filth and garbage in their life. Lord, I pray tonight they would just turn it over to you and experience and accept the forgiveness, Lord, that you offer. Lord, they just lay it down right here tonight at the far end arena and just leave it here in the dirt. Father, may they experience the most amazing peace that only you can give. Lord, our peace is not found in a politician. Our peace is not found in a green dollar bill. Our peace is not found, Lord, in our occupations. Our peace is only going to be found in one place, and until we find you, Lord, we will never experience peace. Father, you're amazing, God. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And we ask this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me say something before anybody moves. If you have any questions about Jesus Christ, I'm the ugliest guy here. You come find me. We have people over here at this blue top tent, our missions team. We would love to talk to you about Jesus Christ. Would you tell us that God has changed and transformed your life tonight? Anybody want to shout freedom just one time? Freedom! Freedom! Yeah! All right. Thank you all. God bless.